All right, welcome to the week four forum. Uh, this week we're talking about how we ask questions, uh, and how to find and formulate research questions. And again, uh, how you go about framing the research you want to do, and, th and that you do that in the form of kind of identifying the questions that you find interesting, that's going to be an important uh, aspect of, of any research pro uh, you know, project. Uh, it's a building block, and, and you have to do it right. Um, a big, you know, an important aspect of this is something that's discussed in the text is the idea of researchability. That there is, you know, that you're interested in something uh, that is political in nature, uh, that has a, you know, a thing that you can hook onto, right? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my uh, experience in writing my master's thesis. Uh, I had spent most of my graduate school uh, time, my, my first two years in graduate school, basically using every course that I took to research the, the topic of terrorism. And so by the time I uh, got to the point of writing my master's thesis, the first thing I knew was that I had read a lot of material and I had a very long list of, you know, of articles that I had, uh, that I had printed or that I had read and taken extensive notes on. And I had a, you know, I already had uh, a really extensive, uh, uh, bibliography uh, in, in starting off with my uh, with my thesis. So I had a little bit of a head start. Uh, at that point though, the question then is what am I, you know, I wanted to write about terrorism. Uh, and, and then the question is, you know, what about terrorism is interesting? And the, and the first thing you find out when you, you know, when you study political phenomena uh, like, like political violence and, and terrorism uh, which is a variety of, of political violence, uh, is that there's a lot uh, dedicated to defining what terrorism is. And so that kind of became my narrative hook for my literature review. And uh, overall, what I discovered over the course of, you know, researching, and I, I was able to kind of group, uh, you know, these articles into kind of different, uh, you know, different categories. And, and what I discovered was uh, that depending on the ideological uh, perspective of, of the author writing, uh, the tendency was to identify a definition that, that highlighted uh, some aspect of terrorism uh, that was congenial for that ideological perspective. So, you know, if you were looking at articles written from a conservative perspective, you know, of course, remember I was in graduate school when uh, uh, Ronald Reagan and, and, uh, and George Herbert Walker Bush were president. And, you know, when they, you know, when the State Department issued white papers and things like that, they, they tended to focus on dissident terrorism, on terrorism that they perceived as threatening U.S. interests, particularly in Latin America and Europe. And so that was sort of the, you know, and, and the result was they had a tendency uh, to use metaphors, you know, terrorism as a cancer and things like that, that, that again, were kind of congenial to their uh, you know their ideological projects. Uh, if you you know if you saw liberals writing about terrorism, what you saw was uh, that they tended to focus on establishment terrorism, on the terrorism that states uh, you know undertook in order to control their populations. And so, you know, you'd, you'd read uh, you know uh, I'm trying to think of some of the guys that uh, some of the people in that Richard Falk and people like that. Uh, their tendency was typically to focus on the idea of establishment terrorism. And so, um, you know, ideologically speaking, you get this idea uh, that, that uh, you know, terrorism and how you define it has, uh, you know, these, these kind of, you know, these kind of loaded ideas. And, you know, I, I, I remember an article by Christopher Hitchens that was in uh, Harper's Weekly that, you know, basically saying that terrorism is hardly more useful than as a term of abuse, uh, that it's simply, you know, something that we attach to, you know, to people whose, whose beliefs and, and activities we don't like. Uh, and so my, you know, my idea in, in establishing that, lit you know, that literature review uh, was to, first of all, I, you know, basically, you know, say, is there an ideologically uh, nonpartisan way uh, of defining terrorism in such a way that it encompasses both the kinds of violence that leads to, you know, the gulag in the Soviet Union and Stalinism, uh, you know, on the on the left, but also uh, that leads to, uh, you know, uh, the you know, uh, 
dissident groups like the Contras and, uh, uh, you know, and, and terrorist groups, uh, dissident terrorist groups uh, like uh, Sendero uh, Luminoso. And so, you know, that, that was sort of the idea. So when you look at a literature review, the first thing you're, you're establishing uh, for the reader uh, is that you have credibility on the subject, that you understand the subject well, uh, and that you also uh, have been able to identify a lacuna in the literature, that there is something in the literature missing uh, that would be rendered more complete if you were able to execute your research. And so, uh, you know, when, you, when you're reading through this chapter, this idea of researchability, this idea that, uh, you know, a literature is sort of a crucible. You are trying to prove uh, to, you know, the community of scholars uh, that the research you need to do or that you propose to do uh, has value. So, um, as always, uh, when we read this stuff, uh, you know, if there's anything that you're struggling with, uh, ask me a question and I will try to help you out. Uh, so uh, let's have a great week of discussion. Let's remember we've got uh, unit one exam, you know, on, on tap this week. So let's make sure we're getting, getting our preparation in. All right. Have a great week.